Hello everybody, welcome back. This is a drone channel as I know. I posted a video of me firing this gun yesterday for literally 22 seconds and I got more views in less than a day than I did with any video I ever posted with my drones. So considering it's things, it's something that people are interested in, I figured I would make a video to just give a breakdown of the anatomy of this weapon and um, that's pretty much it. From front to from back to front, I'm gonna do it. So uh, I'm gonna start with the back. Obviously, in the furthest part of the gun, we have the SBA pistol brace. This is from SB Tactical. Very common with people that are not trying to register their guns with the ATF as an SBR, being short-barreled rifle. So I bought every piece of this of this weapon individually. So when I purchased the lower, which has the, the serial number on it, I never had to register it as a rifle or a pistol so it is built as a pistol anybody that knows anything about these types of, of firearms understands what i'm getting at but as of now this is legal sba pistol brace in the back it's connected to a fortis mil spec uh, buffer tube or receiver extension this is most of the things on this as far as furniture goes is fortis um i love fortis they're a very good company I have the Law Tactical folding stock adapter here, as you see. Okay, so if I press this in and I push it back, that'll bring us into the um, the assembly here with the buffer assembly. This is an H2 buffer. This gun is chambered in 5.56. Geisley buffer and uh, braided spring. Very nice. Okay, I have the Warhammer charging handle it's very similar to the radiant raptor it's ambidextrous um it's not as expensive the radiant raptor i think is overpriced but it's obviously very a very good charging handle but at 150 bucks i thought that was crazy so that's the one thing that i didn't go top shelf on on this gun i spent about between 34 and 37 hundred dollars building this total this is the fortis hand grip um it's carbon fiber infused in a gray um, aesthetic which is nice but this unsafe obviously the gun is not loaded I got the magazine clamp here with my brace my uh, vice um, the inners of this I forgot what they are I can't remember if I got them from Fortis or somewhere else I mean it's a minute detail but it's ambidextrous um, safety um, it's not ambidextrous as far as the mag release goes but that's all you I mean for me it was good but um, I have the skeletonized uh, trigger guard here. I don't know what it is, I forgot. It wasn't much money, but um, I like the skeletonized version. So I seen it aesthetically, I liked it. Obviously it doesn't serve much of a purpose as far as functionality goes, so I, I went with that. Um, what's What I love the most about this lower setup is this trigger. This is the uh, Trigger Tech Diamond 1.5 a uh, pound to four and a half pound adjustable single stage trigger amazing i love this thing it feels so good and i'm um, very happy with it and so far the the professionals i let fire this gun also the first question out of their mouth was what what trigger is that they love it so that's the trigger trigger tech diamond love it uh fortis dust cover same thing same uh aesthetic pattern carbon fiber gray infused to match the look of the gun, you know, with all the all the dressings. Okay, moving to the top. This is just a flip-up sight. It's from um, a, a war veteran, American war veteran. I found them on Amazon. I forgot the name of it, but I, that's all I had to see, war veteran. You know, everything is made from him, USA. Bought it, small, cheap, no big deal. It's basically a co-witness to my EOTech. This is the EOTech EXPS3-0, which means that there is no um, reticle besides the single dot, which I probably, oh, there you go, you got it. So it's a single dot reticle. And uh, that's what the, the dash zero means. Um, anybody that knows sites, EOTech is top shelf. I, I literally got sick when I spent the money buying this thing, but it's something, it's it's bulletproof and, and you know, it's, it's fantastic, I love it. Okay, moving on. Um, the, let's start with the handguard. The handguard is also Fortis. This is called the Night Rail. It has like a weird design to it. If you notice, it has like these pushouts with the um, with with the uh, 
which we call the, the picky rail attachments here if you want to put lights or lasers or whatever you want to put but it's also indented which is nice so um this was maruzi i got this little um finger guard from you know grip or whatever you want to call it foregrip whatever i don't know what the term is it's carbon fiber it's nice you can see it's got i'm keeping the carbon fiber theme obviously and i got the um that the hand grips that go along with it have front and back um but let me not obviously skip over the upper and lower receiver are both lmt the lower receiver is billet so you can see the color difference between the two and the upper is forged and this is my first build so i thought forged was good because they say it's stronger and this that whatever but in the end i'm going to be honest with you you know um LMT also makes what they call monolithic rail, which a uh, monolithic upper, which is the upper that is connected. It's just one piece that goes down the, the length of the rail. Very stable, but it's it's billet. So I think the match between billet and billet would have been nice. What I found was when I mounted these, there was a certain amount of slop. You know, there was a little jiggle between the top, the upper and the lower receiver. So I put a wedge in there, the Colt wedge and it, it it eliminated it instantly but i think that was just because this is a forged upper and obviously being it's forged it's not as precise as the the billet lower okay so moving on uh we covered everything as far as this goes uh let's get to the barrel so the barrel is also geisley it's a geisley 12.5 um cold hammer forged and i also did what they call the bomb proof installation of the low profile gas tube with the carbine gas block it's lined up perfectly and with this fortis uh hand guard it has this um fully circulating mounting system where you have these two steel bars that you use to attach the hand guard to the barrel nut but the barrel nut was supposed to be timed perfectly so the gas tube could slide into one of these one of these little grooves here it wasn't so i had to put a 0 0.002 shim in there and torque it down to about 60 65 pounds in order to get it to line up perfectly okay so now that we passed that let me not forget about the bolt carrier group this is a colt 556 nato bolt carry group bolt carrier group bcg um, and from all the research I've done, Colt is one of the best as far as reliability. They magnetic particle test everything. They uh, also high pressure test, which means they, they check, you know, to make sure. At least that's what I, I, I've read. I didn't see the HP test uh, stamp. I did see the MPI stamp on this, so I could be wrong. If I am, please correct me in the comments. But um love it if you've seen the first video i posted yesterday you can see how nice this thing fires i had the pleasure of being next to two war veterans uh in lane six i was in lane seven and um he was firing a weapon and he was like wow bro what kind of trigger you got in there it's an excellent build and i really really was gracious for his opinion and and his um you know his uh, appreciation of it because this is my first build so i'm very happy with it okay so at the very end of the gun uh, this is the uh, Fortis uh, muzzle brake and the uh, flash guard. The flash guard, I could take it off, but I'm, I'm holding the phone. I'm recording this. Let's see if I could do it on camera. I'm trying. But uh, there's a button in here. It disassembles. It's really nice. Wait, you just press the button down. It spins off, pops off. But it's, it's a uh, stainless steel um, muzzle brake which the gas is in a horizontal direction to lower muzzle rise. And this acts, this muzzle, this uh, gas brake, I don't know what they call it. It acts kind of like a linear compensator. You have obviously these ejection ports on the sides here, but the main is in the front. So it acts as a linear compensator. It's supposed to, you know, uh, limit muzzle rise in rapid fire. Um, and that's pretty much it. I have the quick disconnect mounts for the shoulder strap and uh that's the whole build but like i said i appreciate you guys like i said thousand views in less than a day that's like the most views i've ever seen on any video i posted so obviously this is something of interest to the public and if you watched the video yesterday or whatever time you watch the video this is the follow-up video just so you guys have the 
you know, full anatomy of, of this firearm. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's always a pleasure. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you guys have any suggestions or um, any tips. I'm fairly new to this, so uh, anything is appreciated. Thank you so much.